mono neji pite do chie m o n even chile you go ne ne chichi ono neji bovu you can go in oma balabu nkazo eh akabi du aguleri bulozo ori kwe ni nne no ya kanju edo na nuku oche nwa na nti arasi ya kona ra neji rieze mili Thank you again, sir, for welcoming us in your home. Um, the first question I'd like to ask is, you've been acting for over four decades and you are excellent at what you do. What would you say are the different techniques to embody a character and shape performances? Thank you very much um, for the compliments, by the way. I am a broadcaster and um, I invest a lot of passion in whatever I do. It's the commitment that matters actually, you know, and uh, the moment you're committed to what you're doing, um, you will attain some degree of excellence in it. Because there is dedication, right? It's only when you flirt with what you do, there is no depth, there's no profundity, then you don't make an impression. And because I've been doing it for a long time, even before I started doing it professionally, um, the commitment has always been there. I guess that's what it's all about. Okay, so of all the roles you've played in the past, which would you consider your favorite? Um, I wouldn't say I have any favorite role. But I can say that I was launched by things from apart. Um, I played a cold war in things from apart and um Chinua Achebe paid me the greatest compliment I got at the end of that production. He said I gave it an interpretation after his heart. Uh, it's been my greatest achievement, my launch pad achievement so to speak. Uh, so um if you were to rephrase your question and say um, which role do you think projected you to the world, I would say a couple of things fall apart. Yeah. So after years of performing on camera, what has helped you to achieve your best work? Like I said earlier, commitment, dedication, yeah. Um, the medium of communication is the English language. And um, if you read this all truly, avidly, right, you're likely to acquire a mastery of the language. Uh -huh. And uh, it will help you in interpreting your role. You're not supposed to regurgitate whatever the script says, no. You depend on your own knowledge of language to extemporaneously create so that you can reach out to other people, right? If you have the tools of the trade, so to speak, then then just go ahead and power your way. That's all. So you're going to speak to a young person now who's about to begin as an actor, mm -hmm. and the person has a script. What would you? What are the exact words you would like to tell the person? That will come? First of all, read, read. I have a very, very big library, right? Um, spend a lot of money reading offers of repute. So, hard work. I mean, there is no shortcuts to it. It's just hard work, right? I haven't tried to be like any other person in the industry. But I'm, I'm older than practically all of them, right? But as I was growing up, I was inspired by Somebody called Sir Lawrence Olivier. He is dead now. And uh, in my own opinion and estimation, I think he is very easily the greatest actor that ever lived. Yeah. I always talk about him in the present. I never say he was. I say he is because with each new day you encounter challenges and your mind goes back to what you picked up from that man, you know. Um, I saw him single-handedly go through Shakespeare and he inspired me. So when I go to do any film and you give me a script, 
I read the script, I empathize with the script, then I proceed to do my interpretation. Uh -huh. And uh, it helps me a lot. Yeah. Okay, so I'd like to ask, what's attracted you to being an actor? Um, I think I must give my father that credit. Why? When we were still in school, my father would always tell us that if you came first, he would take you to go and watch cinema. And, uh, well, at the risk of sounding immodest, I had some brains then, and coming first wasn't a problem. I mean, so each time he would take me to go, you know, and uh, that was how that interest was developed, you know. And, uh, it started like that. Then when I went into secondary school and the British Council was coming to show us Shakespearean films on a regular basis every weekend, I discovered that Sir Lawrence Olivier was the person doing this thing all the time. I watched Julius Caesar and I saw him play Mark Anthony. There yeah, was the lifeless body of Caesar, had been killed by Brutus and Casca and Cassius and all that. And Sir Lawrence Olivier, as Mark Antony, dropped on one knee, felt his body, and said, Pardon me, thou breathing piece of earth. And I am meek and gentle with these butchers. Thou are the wings of the noblest mother that ever lived in the tide of time, swore upon the hand that shed this ghastly blood. Over thy woods now do I prophesy, which like dumb mouths do ope their ruby lips to bend the voice and utterance of my tongue. Domestic fury and fierce civil strife shall come on all parts of Italy. Blood and destruction shall be sown in Jews and dreadful objects so familiar that mothers shall not smile when they behold their infants caught under the hands of war. And it affected me. So I picked that bit, you know. When he said, Over thy woods now do I prophesy. Which like dumb mouths do open their ruby lips to bend the voice and utterance of my tongue. I said to myself, this is something else, right? Then he started to talk. A curse shall light upon the limbs of bed. Domestic fury, you know, it was too much for me. And I said, this man has inspired me. I want to be like him. I want to be an actor. And that's it. Okay, I'm sure that deserves an applause. I mean, <laughs> I, uh, I'm sure the audience will clap at that uh, monologue. Wow. Okay, so um, how do you develop your character physicality? You have an imposing character on screen. You know, how do you develop it? First of all, I thank the Almighty God that. Um, I think people feel I have an imposing personality. Um, I'm happy about it. So if you give me a role to play, uh, most most times the roles agree with my person, you know. So um, fitting into the role is not normally a challenge. Um, yeah, that's right. It's what I'm used to. So I just get into it and uh, I handle it and that's it. So, I want us to talk about uh, playing historical figure. It requires intensive research into both the private and public sides of the character. How would an actor pull it off? Again, you read. You have to do a lot of exhaustive research into the person whose character you are going to play. Study that person properly. You know, Jimmy Fox was engaged to play Ray Charles. He had to go and live with Ray Charles for three months. Ray Charles was blind and all that. He, he learned how to walk like him, play the piano like him, and at the end of it, he got an Oscar. I mean, you see, a lot of our people don't invest energy into what they do. Um, I don't know whether they see it 
as a flirtatious involvement. Don't just do it and hurry out so we can pick up money, you know. I don't believe in that. So, um, if I am asked to play a historical character, I read up practically everything I can lay my hands on, on that person. So that when I know a movie to play that character, I can play it very well. Okay, so let's, can you just uh, give us an insight of what you consider the evolution of Nollywood, starting from where you started? Maybe post things for Um Nollywood. Let me borrow the expression of one of my teachers. Nollywood st still slumbered in the womb of time when I was doing things fall apart. I did things fall apart in nineteen eighty five. Nollywood came on board seven years later. 1992 with living in bondage so I preceded Nollywood my seven years Nollywood I've been working extremely hard and we re recorded some evolution in Nollywood right now technically there is hardly anything we can't create yeah um, unfortunately, because people now proliferate film production, the plots have become so sloppy, you know. In the days when we did Igodo and the rest of them, you know, I mean, you could see the challenge in film production. A lot of people now, for lack of gainful employment, would want to pass as actors. So they get involved without training and, well, they get paid and, and they, keep, they keep experimenting and that's it. Uh, but there are people who are actors and who have maintained their stature as actors. Um, I must mention Zach Oji here. Uh, Alex Osifo. There are others who gambled with the industry, spent some time and left. Sir Lawrence Olivier said, if it be a crime to value honor, then I am the most offending slave alive. That was before the Battle of Ajinko. And for me, I value honor a lot. I value integrity. What advice do you have for young actors, young creatives generally? Um, over exposure kills the magic about your professionalism. That I was taught when I was doing a course in England. So I believe that if you over expose yourself, all the myth about you will be lost. Yeah. If a young aspiring actor would like me to advise him or her. You do one or two productions. Don't allow the blandishments from some cronies of yours to affect you. The moment you're told you're fantastic, you believe you've arrived, you stop learning. That's a tragedy. All right. Um, I'm sure you, uh, you've heard about uh, the festival, the Eastern Nigeria Film Festival. And um, of course, that's why we are here. First of all, what do you think about the idea of bringing a festival, film festival, uh, the festival its kind in, in... About time. About time. You see, those of us who are actors of Igbo extraction, we have made the industry. Make no mistake about it. But you see, you can't find any national theater or any arts theater in any of the Igbo speaking states, no. Yeah. Um, we are told to project our culture. All right. I worked with the DSTV people and they gave us a channel. I named that channel 
Ebon and Abotu, and I asked them, come to Enugu and launch it. And they did all that. So bringing the festival down this way is wonderful. Um, so now, back to the industry. How, how do you use your power of, of position of power to advocate for more inclusivity of women in the industry? And to better treatment, to better the treatment of young actors as well? No, 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 no. I mean, it's uh, there is no conscious campaign to recruit young girls or young boys. No, 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 no. If you're good, the industry projects you. If your competence is not marketable, you are shunted into the shadows. There are no two ways to it. Yeah. Okay, so still talking about women in the industry. For instance, one of the, the very first Nigerian Netflix original is was directed by a female, uh, Lionheart, which you played a major role in. I am Lionheart. Okay. <laughs> True, you're right. So, um, do you see such opportunities coming for women, especially behind the cameras, not just in front of the cameras? Why not? Um, Genevieve has done so well in the industry. I am, I am immensely proud of her. Uh, of all the girls who have played my daughters in the movies, um, I think she is one that touches my heart most. You know, um, I love Jenny a great deal. She's very, very enterprising. She's very industrious, you know. Uh, she's somebody you can't suppress. You, she's a talented individual. She's a businesswoman, you know, and uh, she invested so much in that production. And at the end of the day, it was bought by Netflix, and she made a lot of money out of it. Uh, such opportunities are rare, I must tell you, but. They are still there all the same. Yeah, you know, they are there all the same. You see, Genevieve succeeded not because of her sex. So sex has nothing to do with it. Absolutely nothing. Benjamin Franklin said, there are two ways of immortalizing oneself. You either write what is worth reading, or you do what is worth writing about. That way, you will immortalize yourself. So if you want to cut a favorable verdict with posterity, you have to ingratiate yourself with posterity by doing something worth writing about. Now I want you to take that one away. Uh, and uh, I believe also that um, if you work hard, you'll be compensated by the Almighty God. The Lord be with you. Amen.